uh, it's a time for our was uh, lecture. Our speaker is coming from Macedonia. That it's uh, uh, Mr. Kochkowski, right? Yeah. And uh, he has a lot of experience in the WordPress area, maybe 10 years, maybe more. And actually, he is uh, one of the biggest supporters of uh, the WordPress community in uh, Macedonia. And uh, he is uh, here to tell us, to explain us how to make a website with uh, React and with uh, WordPress. Hi. So, as uh, he said, my name is Nitko Kuchkovsky and I come from Skopje, Macedonia. I'm a WordPress developer since 2010. Uh, earlier this year I founded Web Pigment, which is a WordPress agency. I also bu uh, have built a lot of uh, WooCommerce plugins that are already up to date on the WordPress, API, uh, WordPress plugin repository. And I love to visit WordCamps and travel in the process. Uh, I also am one of the organizers of the WordCamp Skopje, which happened for the first time this year. And <laughs> that's it. So, before we start, I would like to tell you what are we going to talk about today. So, first we're going to start with what is React. Then uh, we'll explain what does it mean for a website to run on React. And then how we can impl implement React with the WordPress API. Or, if you think that this is not a good talk for you, you can go and visit uh, Sergey uh, in the Hall 14 uh, in his talk about making WordPress better. Okay, so, before we start, I would like to tell you a story. When I was a kid, and the first time I watched Flintstones, I think everyone here knows what Flintstones is, right? <coughs> So, the first time I watched Flintstone, I went to my mother and asked her when she was a kid, uh, will, will she wrote on stone? She laughed really hard, <laughs> and uh, because she, uh, she also graduated in the Electrotechnical and Informatical Faculty in Macedonia, she said that maybe one day if our path cross, you'll understand that I kind of wrote on stone. But that was bricks, which they built something like this. So they were coding in something like this. So when I, uh, the reason why I'm telling you this story is because a lot of people, when they hear React or Angular or any front-end uh, user interface uh, framework, they're like, ah, I'll just give it a two days, and if something new will come up. I'll learn that. So yeah, fortunately, things are like that in our world, but. Uh, you have to, to improve yourself and always learn new things as you already know. So, let's see what is React.js. React.js is uh, a Facebook, uh, a framework built by Facebook, and it's a JavaScript library for building user interfaces, right? So, what does it mean for a, for a, WordPress, for a WordPress, web, uh, WordPress website to be run on uh, React? That means that everything has to be bespoke. So whatever you build, you have to recompile the whole JavaScript and then re-upload it on the server. Meanwhile, you also have to like uh, build that into the WordPress backend somehow, so you can retrieve that data through the JavaScript, etc. So it's not so standard way of building a WordPress team as we are doing now. So. How, uh, today I'm going to talk about how I built my company website and how it all started. So it all started when there was rumors about uh, building the Gutenberg on React. And what I did is like I purchased a few tutorials about uh, using React and Redux. And I, I went through them all and I was like, okay, now I'm a React GS developer. So. <laughs> After, after those tutorials, uh, because I already had an experience with the WordPress API, I, I found a way how to connect them and how to make uh, my, uh, WordPress, my, my website run on React using the WordPress as an admin area. How many of you guys built a React website? <laughs> I don't care. So, okay, and how many of you use the custom uh, backend area for it? I, I have a lot of people that when I, I showed my website to them, they were like, 
oh, this is smart, I actually can use the WordPress API to build, to build it as a backend instead of building a custom backend solution for my client. So, so the approach that we wanted to do, because uh, the, way, the reason why we built this website is to attract more developers than clients. So we wanted to extend the WordPress functionality because we, we could have built this into a WordPress team which will have only the index.php file inside and then uh, use it as a React file. But instead of that, we created, uh, we, we, we built the React files and then we put it all that into one index.html file in a separate domain and a separate uh, domain for retrieving data. So, and while in the WordPress, uh, we, we've used uh, advanced custom fields flexible box and uh, the retrieving them through the WordPress API so we can have uh, uh, each section be rendered separately into the JavaScript, uh, into the, the React. Uh, we also reduced a lot of the standard API response field, so we removed all the data that we don't need. As you can see on the right, that's a standard WordPress API response, which has a lot of fields. And instead of that, we just added to the things that we need. And as you can see, we added one extra field, which is a page builder that contains elements. So each of those elements has their own React class that are being called dynamically based on the page that you're uh, based on the page that you're opening. Uh, how we configured it because we wanted to change the, the structure totally. So we configured it on a way that we had a domain for assets, which uh, stores the images. And I'm not sure, I, I, I think I'm sure that you already know, but there is an option for you to disable the monthly organized upload media in WordPress, which we did that. That way we, we reduced the, the URL string uh, for the image. And we put that on a separate domain named uh, assets, which then the pet of the asset was under WP content slash uploads. So when you see an image from our website, it has like assets.webpigment.com slash and the image name. We did something similar for the API requests. So uh, the API requests are info.webpigment slash and then we have the Slack. It doesn't matter if it's page or post. So we did the uh, HTTX, uh, HTT access masking of the domain. So each time some, uh, some request is made on the info subdomain, we automatically then append uh, slash wp minus json slash uh, vp slash version two, and then we uh, add a page or a post based on what the actual uh, slug is, and then we just add a question mark slug equal and uh, the, the request itself with the slug in the URL. And then, as I said before, we've built one index.html file that we put into the www domain, uh, subdomain name, and everything goes through there. So the way that we implemented it is that we created all flexible content blocks, which for each, each section, we created a separate, uh, separate flexible block. And then we made a connector class between the React and the WordPress API response, so we can process the layout. What that means is that we have, for example, a, a hero home section, and we have a JavaScript uh, React uh, hero home class. So as you can see on this response, uh, for example, the first one with the three dots under the page builder has a key, which is the page layout. And based on that page layout, we have mapped a specific React class that's going to render that layout. <laughs> and of course, we built all the elements. And that looks something like this. So we have project here, the content area, the image, content area, image, content area, because the images have their own section on our page, so that's why we went to that approach. The optimization, we, we really focused on this part. So 
uh, instead of simple images, we added a picture object, HTML object, which contained uh, two sources. One was the GPH or the PNG, and the other was WebP image. But unfortunately, not all browsers support WebP. So the ones like uh, Chrome and Safari, I think, but Safari only on a web uh, or a, on a laptop or Mac, uh, they they only support it there. So we, we displayed those images based on our CDN. Uh, because uh, the Jetpack CDN doesn't support WebP yet. Uh, while the, the normal GPX or PNGs were going through the Jetpack, uh, Jetpack CDN because they offer an option to reduce the image size based on the query string parameter. So for example, if you add like width equal 300 pixels, no matter how big the image is, it's going to provide you with an image that scaled to 300 pixel width and hit automatic. So that's the first step we did. Then we cut out all the classes and the IDs, and we used like uh, each section had its own alphabet letter first, and then we had uh, they, they were they all had like two two characters in the string in the, the class name. So let's say AA means that it's a, a head, uh, from the hero homepage section, and A means that it's the first element inside. The second A means that it's the first element inside. With this, we reduce the script by 200 kilobytes, which is a lot because the whole page, uh, the whole JavaScript uh, part was like, without gzip compression, was 1.2 megabytes, and now it's only one megabyte. And of course, then we use CDN, and we use CDN for everything, including for the www subdomain. So all of that goes through CDN. And I'm going to tell you something that happened to me like two weeks ago. In our Macedonian uh, programmers group on Facebook, someone asked about how to, does someone have an example of headless WordPress application? Because uh, she wanted to start learning about it and how she can make that. And I provided her with my website URL, told her like, this is something like that, you can see it, see how it's built, let me know if you have any questions, etc. And she replied, if this is what you call a headless application or a, a single page application, <coughs> or progressive web application, then I don't know what you're talking about because the time load of the page is 50 seconds. And I'm like, that's not possible. <laughs> But the CDN was down, so she wasn't able to even see the page because they had some problem. And that's how I made a fool out of myself before checking even the website that is active at the moment. So uh, besides all of that, we optimized the images for different devices. So we have on the home page like a real browser uh, <coughs> slider. So it has like a screenshot from a iMac, and it has inside a screenshot of the browser with the URL inside. So you can literally use the browser navigation arrows to slide through the through the slider with an effect of typing in into the, the URL box on the browser. But if you open that from a desktop computer, you will see the iMac. If you open that from a tablet, you will see a tablet. If you open it from a phone, you will see a phone and images inside have their own versions of, of the uh, showcase. So for example, if you open it on mobile, you'll see a screenshot from the website from a mobile. If you open it from tablet, etc. And as I mentioned before, we removed all of the unnecessary data from the JSON response. The challenge with this implementation was that in order for React to start working, uh, it, the file has to be loaded, and uh, we have a, a loading animation on the website, which we have to move then the CSS and the animation itself into the uh, the index HTML file. So that way, when you land on the page, you can literally see the loader while the JavaScript is being rendered and the request is being made to the WordPress API, so we can retrieve uh, so we can retrieve the page content that you landed on. Then another thing that we had 
is we have two forms on the website, which is, which is contact and careers. And we have to add the security announcement uh, on them. And the problem was that if we go through the CDN and the CDN is set up to never expire unless we manually do so, the problem was that we were going to get uh, an invalid phone's uh, error messages. So for these cases, we added like a JavaScript uh, current timestamp uh, uh, current timestamp into the, uh, the request of the API to retrieve the data. So that way we can always get a new nose each time you open the page. And another issue that we had was the, for the CEO, because not all of the web crawlers are supporting this uh, supporting React. Like, uh, for example, React is a Facebook tool, but their Facebook debugger URL doesn't use JavaScript, so you cannot get data from from Facebook. So if you share our uh, if you share our website to Facebook, you will see a data, but you will see a different domain, which is put it there, different subdomain, which is put it there to to just provide uh, to provide the crawlers with uh, CEO data. And the end result is this, <coughs> but keep it in mind that this is the home page, which we have a lot of images there. And when you try to open any other page, like a blog post or a, or a project, you can, the, the, the load time came down to 250 ms which half of the time is the browser trying to render the React do. So that's all I had to say. If anyone has questions? I have a question. Uh, what is your suggestion where to start with uh, learning React and uh, which tutorials to use as start point to make this kind of websites? Uh, I use the free tutorial and then I downloaded an example and I just extended that example into the, the application that I needed for my needs. So I suggest you go through some tutorial and based on the examples try and extend that for your needs. Hey, uh, thank you for the insightful talk. Uh, I want to ask you, do you, for uh, optimization purposes, do you load all the components of the React app uh, uh, and do you have it all loaded or you use kind of tree shaking as they call it, so you dynamically load only the components that were returned from the WordPress API? Uh, well, because this is fully dynamic. Uh, it loads all of, the comp uh, all of the components at the beginning, but uh, because it's a, it's a more of a show of website, so we have like, I don't know, six or seven, uh, seven different sections. So we are loading all of them, but I suggest you <coughs> control for for a bigger application. So that's the part that I forgot to, to say about the best book thing. So if you want to build a bigger application with, with this kind of approach, just make sure that you have uh, double the time that you thought that you're going to spend for it, because there are no plugins here. You cannot just activate the plugin and the sharing buttons will show up on, on the React app, you know? So you have to do that manually, which will take a lot of time. Hello. Uh, would you say that you sacrifice CO for performance in this case? Mm. Well, kind of, because once we released the website, we received like 45 applications for work, which in these days, especially in the size of Macedonia, it's uh, huge. Uh -huh. I see. And why React in your case? Let's say over uh, and over. Well, view. because uh, Gutenberg was is becoming part of the WordPress core, 
and I wanted to learn it in order for me to know how to build better and more complex blocks using uh, the Gutenberg editor. I see. Thank you. Thank you.